Okay. So first of all, I have here a list of campaigns in which air samples were collected. And then I have here the latitude and longitude coordinates of where each of these air samples was collected from. And then I have numbered each of these locations from 1 to 247. And I want to plot each of these locations on a map. So I'm going to open up this software called Tabula. And you can get a 14 day free trial for this software. And I'm going to connect this to the Excel file that I just had open. So I'm going to double click on this. And you can see this is the exact same details we were just looking at. Now I'm going to go to sheet one. And then you can see here, I now have dimensions and measures. And because the program is clever, it has realized that the columns that I labeled latitude and longitude are the latitude and longitude coordinates. Although you can assign these by clicking here and then going to geographic role and then selecting latitude and doing the same thing for longitude as well. Now I'm going to click and drag longitude and move it into columns and I'm going to click and drag latitude and move it into rows. And you can see the program has now guessed the sort of map or graph that I want. From these options, it has chosen symbol maps for me. Now, if I click and drag number and put it over details, it has now plotted all of the points that I want, all of the locations where air samples were collected. Now, I can change the way this looks. For example, if I go into colour, I can make all of the dots black. I can also change the size of the dots and make them a bit smaller. I can also add in labels by clicking and dragging campaign and putting it over labels. And it's only labeled some of the dots because it automatically doesn't allow labels to overlap. But if I select this option, you can see that I have loads and loads of labels for each of the 247 data points. And it obviously looks ridiculous, so I'm going to remove the labels. Now, I can also change the way the map underneath looks by going to map and map layers. And you can see here I have lots of options. So I'm going to remove all of the uh, country labels and the country borders and just leave the base to have as simple a map as possible. Now I can also make this look more washed out which makes the land area harder to see, but I don't want that. And I can also change the style. So there are three different options for the style. White lets you have um, a gray land mass with a white sea. And then normal is a white land mass with a sort of bluish sea. And then dark is gray and black. And I want mine to be light. And then I'm going to close the map layers. And now if I go here and I zoom out so I can see the whole of the map. And then also if I select this and the panning tool, I can then move the map around the same way you can in Google Maps. So I'm just going to position this the way I want it to be. And then there's obviously loads of other things that you can do in this. This is just the very basics. So I'm now going to right click on this and select copy and copy image. And I'm going to copy just the view, not the title or the caption or anything. And I'm going to copy this and I'm going to open up paint. And then I'm going to control V to paste this. And then I'm going to use the selection tool to select just the area that I want. And I'm going to cut off part of the South Pole. And then I'm going to crop this image. And then I'm going to save this. And I'm just going to save it and call it map. And that is it.